Today we're going to be talking about how to make a GIM kit. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to GIMKit.com up here. Okay, It's going to take you to this page and if this is your first time you're going to sign up for a free account. It only lets you do about three on your very first one but since we're in this uh, pandemic, there's a button for you later on that you can press that allow you to make up to 10 of these. So sign up and I will see you on the next screen. So once you're in, down here in the bottom left corner, you'll see a button that's green, that'll be like COVID-19 something. Click on that, it'll take you to a page where you can upgrade the amount of kits you can make to 10. When you start, you're going to make a new kit. I'm going to show you one of the ones that I have already made. The reason I'm doing so is because you're only allowed so many edits. So once you start it, you want to have as many questions as you can ready to go because if you edit your game too many times, it won't let you edit anymore. So just keep that in mind. This is what happens when you've edited a game too many times. When making a game, you want to start with adding questions. So we can add any type of question that you want. Questions go here. You can add audio, then you're going to have to upgrade your subscription. You can add a photo. It's taken from Unsplash, which is a site that allows you to download and use stock photos. So you can search something like virus. Put that in there and voila, you have a picture. Now, if you've ever played Kahoot before, you put in your answers as however many you want correct and then how many that you don't want correct. The cool thing about GimKit is that you don't have to worry about the order that you put it in. You want to always put in your answer as correct on this first one and the rest you just make incorrect because it randomizes your answers in a new order every time uh, that question comes up. There you go. Now, if you want to delete a question, come up here, click on this box here, and you can delete it. When you're ready to go, just hit Finish Kit. When you're ready to play, come on over here and click Play. So the most simple way to play this is through Classic Mode, which is everyone versus everyone. Uh, you do have this other cool one, which is one versus the rest, which would be cool to do maybe a teacher versus the rest of the students. But since everyone's going to be playing from home on their own devices, classic mode is going to be the best option for you. Game goal. Okay, You can play against time. You can race to a certain amount of points. Or everyone tries to earn as much money as they can, but the game ends when the collective total of all players meets a certain goal. I like to set a time limit. Um, the very first time I play, I usually set a 10 minute timer for them to where they can just play and not worry about who has the highest score just so they can learn all the different ways to play. And then I let them play the same game again and then I put it up for 30 minutes. And then that way they know how to play, they understand how the game works, and they can play it for real for actual points. I only do this though for the very first time we ever play together. Starting cash, I always put at zero. Handicap, this is good for lower grade levels so that they don't get discouraged and have a whole bunch of negative points here and they can only lose down to a certain amount. If you have really young kids, I would set it to zero. That way they can't get negative points. If you're in the upper grade levels, this would be good to set a cap of like negative 2000 to encourage students to not just guess because you lose points every single time you get a wrong answer. I always check off answer check because the game will continue to go and it will redo questions over and over and over until time is up. Since we're doing a time limit, you don't want them to know the answers because they've just been given them, but they need to know them because they actually know them. I always leave music on. Uh, choose your poison here. Do you want clapping or not? At the end, it's a silly little function where kids can just click the screen and it will clap. Um, that is literally all it does. Uh, at home, this might be fine. In the class, maybe or maybe not turn it off depending on you. I always let kids join in late because sometimes they get kicked out or sometimes they were pulled out of class. 
and this will allow them to jump in at any time and especially if they get kicked out of the game or something happens to their computer they can always rejoin. Power-ups are awesome I always leave those on that allows them to use cool powers to get way more points. Themes are always fun and clean power-ups only. This one is something that you need to have your class vote on because clean power-ups only makes it to where they can't attack each other with certain power-ups, such as freezing somebody to where they can't even answer a question. So if your class really enjoys attacking each other, then uh, leave that off. Uh, but if you have a class where they get really upset every time something happens to them and they can't handle that, then you want to turn clean power-ups only on. Of all my voting in my classes, I have not had one class that wants clean power-ups only. So once you've done that, you're ready to go. So you just click continue. So once this pops up, the code will be up here. So if you're doing this for distance learning, you're gonna wanna share this code and this, maybe take a screenshot of just this and send that out through Facebook or whatever way you share information with your families. Students are gonna put in that code and then they will put in their name. As players join, you're gonna see their names start to show up here, okay? As a teacher, just like in Kahoot, you can actually get rid of the inappropriate ones. So Jerry is fine, one of my students, but Huge Butts is not one of my students. So hover over the name and click it, and it will get rid of it and push it back to the player to then have to redo it, and they have to join the game again with something more appropriate. Now they join with a better name. Once all of your students are in, we're gonna start our game. As students answer questions, their amount of money that they make will go up. Anytime a student does something in the game, it will appear down here in the game board for everyone to see. The leaderboard over here will move up and down depending on who has more money at the time. They can go down when they buy stuff because they lose money, and they can go up when they get more questions right. Once the game is over, it'll give you the first place, second place, third place, and then we'll list all the other people underneath. You will start to see, if you've enabled clapping, a clap in the upper left-hand corner will start going up. That's just kids tapping a button for the sake of tapping a button. That's okay. When you're done, you can go over here and review a report. And it shows the students what questions they got right, what questions they didn't, and the percentage of those questions. You can do that for each student. You can do it for the entire class. And you can even break down the questions themselves to see as a whole what questions they got right and wrong so that you can go back and reteach certain things, which is super helpful. When you're done with your game, X out, go back to your dashboard, Play a new one. A lot of these options over here, we don't have access to because we have the GimKit basic account, but they're pretty cool to do seasons and challenges and stuff if you pay for one of the upgraded accounts. Now let's say you don't necessarily want to do one of your own and you want to find one that's out there. You can go up to search for kits and type one in. Let's say we want to do a fun one. Disney characters. You can go down here, pick one, see what it is. I like all those ones. We can hit play and begin just a random fun one without wasting one of your own free creations. Now you know all the basics of GimKit. Now get started having fun with your students who are stuck at home. <laughs>